take one. Action! Ooh, I'm so nervous. Okay, I don't know why I am extremely nervous. I just am. I think it's because this is the first time I'm having to really come to terms. I mean, I've been coming to terms for the full year on just how big I've gotten. And it's, it's hard because I don't fully feel like it was all my fault. Which is a horrible mindset to have when you're talking about your mental health, your physical health, you know, things like that. Thinking that something, you know, honestly isn't all your fault. <laughs> Intermission break. Da -na 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 -na. <laughs> I mean, that those are my dogs. <laughs> The biggest reason why I don't feel like it's fully my fault is because COVID. Oh my God, I said the word you're not allowed to say online. The pandemic, the pandemic, the pandemic. Because of the pandemic, okay? Like, I was stupid fit before I came back to the States. Um, I've been living outside of the country for three years. My job afforded me that. And in 2019, I came back. I was doing really well. I was super healthy. I exercised every day. I was constantly doing things. I was enjoying my life, my body. I was happy. And I thought coming back here to the States it would be fine and I would keep up with it. My job when I came back to the States became more sedentary. I took on a more sedentary job, which I did gain weight. Yes, in 2019, I did gain a little weight towards the end of it, maybe 15 pounds, 10 to 15 pounds max. It was still doable weight. <laughs> like it wasn't ungodly amount of weight on me. It was not the best and I was working towards it and then 2020 happened. You know, this 2020 and uh, unfortunately during 2020 we all got isolated to our homes, weren't allowed to go and work out, weren't allowed to leave our homes. Granted, the job I had let me go out and, you know, do stuff. And I don't mean do stuff as in, like, go mingle in public spaces. I mean, like, I was able to go work out. No. No, I don't. I don't mean that. I don't know why I said that. God, I feel like an idiot. No, they let me go to work, <laughs> which... I went from going five days a week and two, three days a week because we had a rotation for the pandemic. So that was nice. That was super nice and it's been super nice. But the problem is when you're getting isolated to your home or a sedentary job, you're not getting a lot of movement. And I've tried working out at home. I really, really did. It just doesn't work for me. I don't do well working out at home. I was doing fine during the spring. I was working out outside in my yard. I pulled out this big workout mat and I was doing it. I was, I was determined. And then I had some health problems pop up and I could barely walk for three to two months. And that, that was hard. It was so hard on me. And I was in a relationship that ended. And it, it ended for a lot of reasons. Um, but one of the biggest reasons was 
I was unhappy with myself. I felt completely like a beluga whale with this guy because he is, he was, you know, fit, healthy. He was the opposite of me where all he did was can't keep weight on and all I could do is just put on weight. I could put up muscle, weight, all of that super fast overnight and I had no problem. He's he was the opposite like he was always thin extremely thin and I envied him and I also felt like a fucking joke I felt like that fucking joke I felt like that I felt like I was the fat chick dating the thin guy that Let's be serious. People make fun of. I don't care who you are. You've seen it. All of us have seen it growing up. You have a, oh, an attractive guy and he's dating a heavier set girl. And people make fun of it. They don't see the girl for a personality. You're made to think that this girl is just an object. We we portray that in media. Yeah, we're getting better, but we fat shame so many people over and over and over because we're fat phobic. We really are. We don't know what people are going through. But we do it. And just because we're not sitting there and we're not saying to like someone who's 200 pounds hey you're 200 pounds and you're really really fat you need to lose weight for your health we're not doing that just to them we're doing it to the girl who's maybe gained 30 pounds too much so now she's you know carrying more weight, we make comments about that. We we belittle them and make them not feel good. That's fat phobic too. Like, we're just super fat phobic in this. And no matter how much I've tried to not be that way, I'm that way to myself. I see beautiful, curvy, women everywhere else and I think how beautiful they are but I can't translate that to myself I don't know why I just can't I cannot see myself as a beautiful voluptuous woman with curves I see myself and all I think is how unattractive I have become <laughs> how I'm never gonna be happy unless I'm stick thin and honestly that's not true but the problem is you have to rewire your brain you have to rewire the way you view things and the way you let people speak around you. And it's hard. It's hard. Because. I was never that fit girl. I was never the most attractive one. I wasn't the girl that got asked out. Fuck no. I never, I had to take scraps growing up, like, oh god, this just sounds like a horrible YouTube channel already, like, why am I even talking about this shit, I don't know why, but I am, and we're gonna, we're gonna go with it, we're go just gonna keep going, I don't wanna cry, but I'm probably going to, fuck my life, oh my god, this is horrible, so, and I just ramble and I'm so sorry about that. I just, I can't keep focused. 
I have ADHD and this is hard for me and I'm trying. I am trying so hard. But I ended up doing just like never being doing. I don't know why I said doing. I've never been the fit girl until five years ago. I was never the pretty girl until five years ago. I was never the girl that people were like, oh my god, I want to ask her out. She's so cool. She's so amazing. I wasn't that. I wasn't that. I was the smart girl, the chubby girl, the, oh, your friends are really attractive. I want to date your friend, not you. I mean, I literally had an ex-boyfriend Me, one of my best friends at the time, and he literally told me when she, when she wasn't in the room, like, oh, I should have went for her, not you. She's the pretty one. Like, I don't know where in the world someone thought that was an appropriate, appropriate comment to ever make to the person you're dating. Fuck you, asshole. I don't know why you thought that was okay. But that fucked me up. That's fucked me up inside. That really has fucked me up. Because that's how I felt. I always felt after that I was never the first choice. Because of that one douchebag. And that's hard to rewrite. I was 16. And I was in love with this fucking dude. And that's the shit he said to me. Of course that's gonna fuck you up. Of course that's gonna fuck you up. So, I grew up like that. And then I ended up in a situation where I finally became fit. I finally was loving myself. For the first time ever, for the first time ever, I was loving who I was internally, externally, everything. Like, I was happy. I was that girl that people wanted to date, people wanted to get to know. I was her. And that felt so great. And then I come here, and I moved back to the States, and I still was that girl for a long time. And then I became the girl that ate that girl and became sad. Um, which is on me. It, it's on me that I based my self-worth and self-love on how I physically look and how I physically feel. But to be honest, who of us don't? Who of us out here don't do that? Like, think about it. You don't buy nice clothes to dress your body up in nice things to not feel good about yourself. You just don't do that. We're all a little conceited in that aspect that we want to look good, that we want to feel pretty. I mean, we all want that. It's just hard when you feel like the tables are stacked against you. And let's be honest, this year, the tables have been stacked against a lot of us. A lot. Like, fuck this shit. It's been stacked against us. Honestly, it really, really has. What can you do about it? You really can't do shit right now. I mean, gyms are opening up. I've I've been, I was going until, you know, the resurgence, um, which happened in November. And unfortunately for my job field, I can't go. Um, And that sucks. And that really, really sucks. It really affects you mentally. When that's your outlet, that's how you base your self-worth is off of working out and getting endorphins from working out. It's really hard when you can't get the same thing from running outside. Not everybody's a runner. 
And that's like the worst part. People are like, well, you could do this. You could do that. Not everybody's a runner. Not everybody has lives in safe spaces where it's they're able to just run outside, where they're able to ride their bikes around the areas. Or, you know, let's be honest. It's hard for women, first off, to get out there at any weight and run around an area because regardless if you want to talk about it or not, women live in fear a lot of the times that they're going to be assaulted, that there's going to be a creep that follows them home. That's why gyms are so important. So it's hard when you when something that that is your safe place, which for me, a gym is a safe place. Yes, my home is my safe place too, but that's a place where I can get out of my own way. And I can rebuild myself and I mentally, physically, all of that. Um and this is what I want to do with you guys is go on this journey of rebuilding myself. And letting you know it's okay. We all fail. We all have gained a little pandemic weight. Um, Regardless if you've gained pandemic weight or you just gained weight from having a baby or life. It's okay. We'll go on this journey together. We'll improve... (laughs) I want to review fitness garb with you guys and really comment on what's best for people who are starting out. Because let's be serious, when you're super thin and super fit, you can wear almost anything and be fine to go work out. I've been there. I've done that. Like, I literally could go to the store and grab anything. I could grab a really shitty sports bra and be fine. But now I can't. I'm I'm sitting pretty heavy right now. And I can't just go and do that. So it's hard. It's hard when you, you buy from companies and they brand things as high impact or medium impact or low impact. Or they label themselves as all sizes. But their whole size range is really shitty. It's, their bras aren't meant for girls with big titties. Like, I don't know who's out here not realizing that not everybody has small titties. Like, bitch, I'm 4'11 and I've always had big titties. 4 fucking 11 with literally, in high school at 16 with a size D. Like, I was, you know, 103 pounds with size D titties. Like, that's too much. But that was my life. I'm literally here weighing way too much. I mean, I might as well tell you. (sighs) 157, which is an exorbitant amount of weight for me. I just want to get back to 132, which was what I was at. When I was my fittest, and I know that still sounds like a lot, but people would comment about me being outrageously thin, which I I wasn't. They'd be like, your face is all sunken in. My face was not sunken in, bitch. It's called contour, okay? I would contour that shit to the, you know, heavens. And uh, that's why I didn't contour. And uh, now I'm having to contour, and it's... It's a learning curve again. Yeah, but you have brands out here who sit there and they talk about being plus size available or available for people with, you know, bigger, fuller figures, curvy, but they're not. Not all of them are. Like, I literally bought some high impact sports bras that were in the size range that I've been wearing from this company and their medium impact that legitimately my titties about to fall out of because all they make these on are for 
super small women. That's not, that's not how this works. That's not how these work. I, I don't know why anybody would ever be like, oh, yeah, all you have to do when you're making bigger sizes is just, like, make the pattern a little bigger. Bitch, no, you gotta take in boobs. You gotta figure out, like, ah, oh. so that lady is probably a large, which means she needs more surface area for the titties. It's not that hard. It's not that hard to figure out. Not really that hard. I am sorry. This is a horrible rant. It has been the worst thing possible. Um, thank you for your time. And, uh, yeah, this channel is definitely going to be sli uh, slightly vlogging, slightly, you know, review, slightly home decor because I believe if your home's not clean and your home, your home is a mess, you're mentally a mess, you can't focus on anything, and physical health. I don't know. This is just going to be me. That's what this channel is. This is me. That's all this is, which is the fairy realm. And I'm Amanda Fairy, and I don't know why it took me that long to get there, but I'm Amanda Fairy. And I'm really sorry about how shitty this is. This has been the worst. But thank you guys for literally getting to this point in the video. And I don't know. Like and subscribe. I promise everything will be a little bit more better in the end. Actually, probably not. Honestly, it's probably going to be this much of a shit show the whole way through. At least it's funny. Kind of. This, this was not. This was just sad. This was pathetic and sad. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>